Welcome back to the Sports Zone here on AM 1380 WTYM and Family Life TV. Also, thank you to all those who are watching on Ustream. You can see I got the uh, equipment back this week and pictures a little bit clear. Graphics are a little sharper, so we're having a good time. On the phone, we have the host for the Pittsburgh Power pregame show on Trib Live Radio, Mr. Dom Arago. Dom, how are we doing today? John, I'm doing great. I want to thank you for having me on the show tonight. It's going to be a pleasure, I think. Oh, no problem, no problem at all. We're glad to have you here. Hey, I just want to jump right into it because I got some, I got some cool things I want to ask you because uh, a lot of people they're they're in the dark about this stuff right now. Uh, the the strike, quote unquote. And I say that in quotation because I don't know if it really was uh, going into the Hall of Fame game and the the, the power played the Orlando Predators. Uh, you notice that some a lot of the players weren't there. Uh, there was and there was strike talk. Was this really a strike? If you look at what uh, the union head, Ivan Soto, tweeted out, uh, he said the players were on strike. It was a work stoppage. Now, what he's claiming is that it was a work stoppage as a result of the team firings. Uh, but, again, he's saying it was a strike. Uh, the other guy, the president of the union, is saying, no, 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 there was no strike. So I don't even think they have their own story straight. But the official story from what we were told is the players went on strike around 6.05, and the strike ended at 1 a.m. Uh, right after the game. It lasted basically three throughout the game. Not exactly much of a strike, but it was a strike. So that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah strike nonetheless. Now, uh, as most strikes are, this has to be all money-driven, I imagine? Yeah, uh, what happened, uh, all the players agreed this year uh, to their contracts. The quarterbacks would make a bonus, but every player in the league makes $400, and whatever players designated the starting quarterback of each game makes like a $1,200 bonus, so they'd make around $1,600. What happened here, all these players signed on the dotted line. They knew the pay. They knew what they were going to be getting this season. And then all of a sudden, in the, in, in the couple weeks leading up to this opening game between Orlando and Pittsburgh, we're starting to see reports of, oh, there's labor unrest. Oh, the players want more money. They wanted actually like a 300% raise. They wanted $1,200 a game. Obviously, the owners were saying, no, that's not going to happen. We expect these players to honor their contracts. And what happened as things were building towards it, you started getting tweets from Ivan Soto on Twitter. I'll have to get you his Twitter address because some of the stuff he was tweeting out there, he, he's so unprofessional in what he's putting out there. He's starting to say things like, oh, there's a 10% chance that these games are going to be played. And, and in the end, when it started to look like the players were going to strike because they were feeding information through a mole. That's exactly what Kyle Riley said in an interview with ArenaFan.com. They were feeding misinformation to a mole to find out who was snitching to ownership. So there's a lot of divide between the players, as we saw, by how many players crossed the line in Orlando to play the game. It, it's just it was it was a, a totally fluid situation. I still don't think everybody knows exactly what's going on with this. What a mess! That's all I got to say. Yeah, it sounds like a huge mess. There's miscommunication flying. And no one can seem to sort out, not even the people throwing the information around. We're talking to Trip Live Radio host Dom Erico on the Sports Zone AM 1380. Now, uh, I noticed in the, in the Hall of Fame game, the, the power had some starters there. Now, the, the, and there, the rumor was that the whole team was fired just hours before the game started. What was the story about that? Was, it, was the entire team really fired? And then uh, why were there some original starters still at that game? Well, here's some of the tricks with the Arena Football League. You know they use different terms. Like when they say league suspension, that might only be a week. It may not actually be an actual suspension. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a term that they use. They say players are assigned, reassigned, recallable reassignment. I think what happens here, because of league rules, you have to have a roster of 21 active players going into this game. Uh, since they had to sign replacement players, they had to get rid of players. And I think what they did, uh, just as a result, was they said, everybody's fired. And then those of you that want to play tonight are going to sign a new contract to play with the team this year. And that's why we saw players like Mike Washington, Linnell DeWalt, Andrico Hines, the, the backup quarterback who became the starting quarterback. You saw Brian Williams uh, and some of the other players cross the line and come back to the team. But I think just as a result, it was just easier to say to the entire team, you're fired. And I saw online, you'll get a kick out of this one, it got fired at, they got fired at the Olive Garden down in Orlando. I did see that. I was that about to say, <laughs> when you're at Olive Garden, aren't you supposed to be family, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're when you hear everyone's family, apparently, unless you're an Arena League football player, <laughs> or somebody else posted something like, uh, you know, if you're fired at all, from Olive Garden and you're not an actual employee at Olive Garden, then your life is not so good. But. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, now, now, what I under from what I understood, the power had no obligation to pay for their travels back home once they were in Orlando. Correct. 
That is correct, and, and I'm told that at least seven players did make the trek back. Uh, I think Ivan Soto tweeted out that the players were being taken care of out of the union funds, uh, so they got a ride back to Pittsburgh. But there was a mess about uh, you know Kyle Rowley and Taylor Rowan saying how their belongings were removed from their apartment uh, while they weren't there, and there's some question as to whether that was legal or not. Uh, just a, it's just a crazy situation left and right, and, and as you can imagine. Absolutely, and it, it just seems like one big mess. Now, you're talking about Kyle Rowley. He was supposed to be the uh, the stabilizer at the quarterback position for the power. Uh, last year, it was kind of a revolving door policy. You had everyone from uh, Bernard Morris to Anthony Morelli to Kevin McCabe to uh, Chris Wallace, yeah, and even even more were taking uh, Bill Stahl. Uh, this was a guy, he had a lot of experience. He was supposed to bring the experience and be stable there. And then uh, before the game starts, the majority owner, Matt Shaner of the Pittsburgh Power, says that uh, he doesn't fit the system and he will never play for the Power. Uh, was this, uh, do you, and, uh, and there aren't a whole lot of facts going on or a lot of things being released about this. In your opinion, was this an attitude thing or maybe a, uh, just a playing thing? Um, I've not been able to confirm. Nobody has told us who the Powers uh, union player rep is, but all signs are pointing towards it being Kyle Rowley. He was at the forefront of this. Uh, his side of the story, according to Arena Fan, is that he was willing to take his $1,600 per game as the starting quarterback with that signing bonus, and he wanted it redistributed amongst the players. He was willing to play for just $400 a game. Wow. I think he was involved kind of in the negotiations. He said how the uh, union was feeding some players misinformation to try to, you know, smoke out the mold, so to speak. I think he was just kind of right in the middle of all of this, and I think that's where ownership finally came in and said, you know what, if that's how you're going to be, you're not going to play for us. Again, it's been hard to verify this information because nobody wants to talk about this strike. Unbelievable. Just It seems like a reality show almost, like a soap opera going back and forth. We're talking to Trib Live Radio host Dom Erico on Sports Zone AM 1380. Uh, now, stepping in for rally was Andrico Hines, former AF2 quarterback in Middle, uh, Middle Tennessee state quarterback uh is this his job now is it does it look like the power are going to go with him I, look, I, I was looking over the roster he seems to be the only quarterback on the roster now obviously they're probably gonna have to sign somebody but is this his job to lose now i know uh coach siegfried often speaks in coach speak heading up into it and he said that the starting gig had not been determined between kyle rowley and andrico hines going into the first game of the season i know that's a lot of coach speak uh, everybody with with a pulse knew it was probably going to be kyle rowley just based on his arena bowl mvp experience uh one of the league mvp uh, he's won an arena cup with with coach siegfried had a great rapport so in my opinion, it was going to be Rowley's job to lose. Now that it Hines is on the line, uh, right now I would say it is his job to lose, but in the Arena Football League, you're only one call away from being out of a job. I know there's some decent quarterbacks out there. One that comes to mind immediately is Kurt Rocco. Uh, he mm-hmm. played for Cleveland last year. I know you probably saw him a couple times right. covering the team. I think he might be a good fit for this team, but uh, Siegfried seems uh, pretty confident in what Hines brings. But I, I have a hard time believing we're not going to see a repeat of what we saw last year, which was quarterback shuffle. You know, they couldn't get any consistency going. Nobody could stay healthy. And I think that's just a problem. Hines was kind of inaccurate early in that game, but a lot of that had to do with the fact he was thrown to replacement wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Once the real guys came in, uh, you know, once Joystick Washington, Linnell DeWalt, and even P.J. Berry got in that lineup, all of a sudden his accuracy got a lot better. So I think Hines can do the job, but he's unproven, and that, that could be a problem. Yeah, it's funny how, uh, <laughs> how your starting wide receivers can all of a sudden make you look like a much more accurate quarterback. Uh, now, uh, there was a little bit of controversy, and no one's really bringing it up, and it, it they're kind of just kind of letting it die, but I'm going to dig it up real quick because I, I want your opinion on this. And uh, during the game, during the Orlando game, Pittsburgh and Orlando, they were kicking off the 25th season of the Arena uh, Arena Football League. Apparently, there was an unspoken agreement between the two head coaches that they weren't going to play more than like five of their original starters just to try to keep the playing field even because there was a whole bunch of labor disputes going on in each team, and then not only not everybody had their starters, and someone had more starters than others. And uh, during the broadcast. Uh, the Orlando coaching staff kind of express a little bit of grief or, uh, you know, backhandedness because allegedly the power were playing more starters than what they uh, originally agreed to. Now, I, there, there aren't any facts on that yet from what I understand. Maybe, uh, maybe you know something, but what, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I do know, like they had mentioned during the broadcast, that the teams had agreed to five, and anybody could see, you know, any jersey with a, a last name on it was obviously a regular player that <laughs> right. had crossed the line, and it was going to be in there. And I know Pittsburgh probably had at least 10 or 11 players uh, by the middle of that game, all with names on, on their their back of their jersey so uh, if it was agreed to uh, at five starters so to speak per per team obviously Pittsburgh did cross that line I do know uh, I read a quote somewhere uh, one of the ownership said you know it was a changing fluid situation and, and nobody really knew what was going on and maybe there had been backroom deals kind of agreed so so to speak I do know one of the rules was you couldn't blitz in this one uh, mm-hmm. with one of the linebackers it was kind of like really they dumbed down some of the rules of it it wasn't really an arena football game that we saw Friday so to speak other than you know some of the players and they were playing in the style of arena football but everything that the power did everything Orlando did in that game I don't really consider it to be real so to speak it's going to count in the standings and I think that's the biggest unfairness of it all is that Pittsburgh and Orlando were put into this situation and had to try to make these kind of deals to start Uh, I completely agree because now this reflects on their record and and most of their team wasn't even uh, a part of that or at least a a bulk of the team wasn't even responsible for the loss and or the win. But, uh, okay, we've got about a minute left. Uh, Dom, what I want you to do, we're talking, by the way, talking to Trip Live Radio host Dom Marico on AM 1380 WTYM, the sports zone. Uh, Their their next game is the home opener, March 23rd. I know you're going to be there. I know I'm going to be there. Uh, They're playing Philadelphia. You, You like their odds. Um, actually, I don't. I, I thought going into the season, Philly was a better team. They've got all pro arena talent, just about every starting position. I don't think Pittsburgh has that. I think Pittsburgh's edge was Kyle Rowley, uh, and now that he's gone, I just don't see them having the quarterback consistency play to beat Philly. I mean, stranger things have happened. I mean, we saw last year they took Philly to overtime mm-hmm. for ultimately losing, but my gut feeling is that Philly's just a little bit better. I think it's going to be a lot like the Jacksonville game last year where you saw the better quarterback in, in Aaron Garcia. I think Pittsburgh's going to stay with them a little bit, but my gut feeling is Philly's just going to have too much talent. They've got like three uh, double-digit interception guys in the secondary. They've got three all-pro wide receivers. Uh, It's just better talent across the board, and I hate saying that because I hate Philadelphia with a passion, but (laughs) my gut feeling is Pittsburgh's going to lose this one by two touchdowns. All right, well, I hope, and I'm sure you hope you're wrong, too. Time will tell. The opening game, March 23rd. Thank you very much, Dom. Follow him at Steel City Voice on Twitter. The guy has so much great uh, content, so much in in-depth content, anything you ever want to know about the Arena League, he has. He will have you on lockdown. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Dom. Hey, thank you, John. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come down.